Hello, Atlanta Film and TV. This is entertainment journalist Mandisa Johnson. And today we are having a conversation with actress and coach Viviana Chavez, a.k.a. Vivi. Hello, Vivi. Vivi. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that sounds better. Vivi. <laughs> Hello, Viviana. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. So can you give us some background about who you are and what you do in the Atlanta film and TV industry? Sure. Um, I am a bit of a renaissance woman of sorts. I have been working professionally in Atlanta since 2010, and I started out in the acting realm and quickly got into producing, ADing, photography, coaching, quite a bit of, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, but now I'm mainly an actor slash producer slash photographer and coach, acting coach, that is. Wow. So you, you, you are a renaissance woman. You do it all, which is nothing wrong with that. Nothing but, wrong with it, except it makes you tired. <laughs> yeah. I Trust me. I, I know. I, I, I'm the same way. I pretty much do do it all. There's not really like not too much I can't do except maybe lighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So can you take us on your journey of how you got your start in acting to how you began your career in film and television to where you are now? Sure. Um, so I started out in acting in high school. So I know a lot of people, they grow up wanting to be actors like since they're kids, but I never really thought about it until high school. And it was funny because it was a little bit by accident. I had to audition for the school plays as like part of the curriculum mm -hmm. and I didn't get cast originally but a friend of mine did and then she decided not to do it and they replaced her with me they were like oh do you want to do you want to be in this one act play and I was like okay like it sounds like it could be fun I've never acted before but sure and immediately it was like I just fell in love with acting I it was like the exact right fit and ever since then I was like okay well I'm gonna take drama classes and I'm going to study theater. And I, I just kind of went, went down the rabbit hole of it all. And so I majored in college. I majored in theater with an emphasis in acting and I double majored actually in um, what at the time was called telecommunication arts, but I guess mass media production, whatever you want to call it now. Uh, so I double majored in that as well because I was really interested in behind the camera. And so I kind of got both, both worlds there and in college in 2010, I made it a goal to sign with an agency and talent agency. And so I was very fortunate and got representation my senior year of college. And I've been with that agency ever since. And that led to, of course, many opportunities to audition for wonderful projects. And I booked one of the biggest things I booked pretty early on was The Walking Dead. I booked the first season of Walking Dead. And uh, that I'm sure opened doors to all the other projects that started coming to Atlanta at the time. And it just has kind of been consistent since then in the acting world, at least. And through the, the acting world, I've discovered other parts of the film industry that, and from my degree, but other parts that I enjoyed like producing or ADing. And so I kind of flip flop back and forth between those two things um, on the indie level and or the commercial level and um through that i also discovered coaching actors and i always like giving people advice in this industry i always love helping others it's just like in my nature i want to give as much as i can to people because i understand how confusing it can be if you've never done this before and no one's telling you how to do it and i sympathize with that or empathize with that and so it's important to me that people understand this industry and understand how it all works and how you fit in. And if you want to even try to fit in, um, because it is just, it's a, it's a big thing. It's a big industry. Right. And yeah, so that's where the coaching kind of comes in is I realize that there is a need for it um, with, especially with newer talent, especially in Atlanta, you know, because we became such a hub so quickly that, new people are are like well i've always wanted to act so what about now what do i do where do i go and so it's it's good to get people on the right path right yes so you want to see people win you're the you're like absolutely 
yeah, you're like the reason why we started Philanto Film and TV. Like there were so many people that came to me were like, well, how do I, how do I get my kid in acting? What are the best acting classes? Headshots. Mm -hmm. I'm in a group now mm -hmm. where like people think that they can, you know, just start without doing background. I'm like, well, you, you need some type of experience. You need that. Hold off on the headshots. Yes. Get experience. So that is like the whole same exact reason why Atlanta Film and TV it has started. I love that. Yeah, so we did at first, we gave a lot of game about the industry. I kind of pulled back a little bit. I, I have started coaching, um, like pulled back when I say that, like with the blogs, like I would oh, yeah. post those, but I had I'm more focused on interviewing people like you and learning about, you know, learning about them. Um, but you talked about how you didn't necessarily want to go into acting. Can you talk about what it was before that you were interested in? Oh, well, <laughs> yes. Okay. So <laughs> it's funny because I've always loved drawing and photography and uh, singing actually, but I am not a singer. Please don't make me sing. <laughs> I, I actually, the one thing that gives me stage fright is singing. So I was like, well, that's obviously not going to happen because my, my, literally my body won't let me, uh, <laughs> but, um, but I've always loved drawing and art and painting and photography. So I was always kind of interested in that, but on the flip side of that, way before I actually loved archaeology and history wow. and so I when I was a little kid I used to want to be an archaeologist and when I think about all of that now though what I what I see is a love of storytelling and a love of people you know because I love archaeology for discovering the history and the stories of the people and then telling those stories and keeping those stories alive which I think is what our industry does right to a certain degree, certain stories, they keep, they open people's eyes to uh, to other people that they might not know about or to being involved in the same sentiment as someone else. Like, oh, that person feels the way I do and I didn't realize other people felt that way or had that experience. And I think that's the love of people in that way and storytelling in that way, I think was always the through line to everything. And then drawing and photography because I love it. It's beautiful, <laughs> you know. Wow. So I think it all kind of found its way, its com combination in the right way. Wow. Well, yeah, you can still, of course, if you still do photography, you can still do that. Of course, yeah. Nobody, I mean, everybody needs a headshot. Um, but yeah, that that's like me. At first, I was diehard on being like a scientist or yeah. an author. But then, then I was like, I had them in like four. I was about to, I think I was, I'm from Ohio and I was mm -hmm. going to go to the Ohio State Fair. And I remember my mom was doing my hair and we were watching a Jerry Lewis movie. And I don't remember what Jerry Lewis movie it was, but he was a scientist and he turned into a monster. And after that, I was like, I don't want to be a scientist. <laughs> you were like, if that's what happens, I don't want to do that. But my mom was a scientist. She was a science teacher. Wow. So, um, yeah, and then the whole idea of going to medical school, I, no. But um, I had acting a drama class in kindergarten. It was either kindergarten or first grade. And I would go home and I would mimic for my mom. And I didn't know I was doing a monologue and then got into theater and all that. So it's kind of like the same where, you know, I tell people sometimes, well, yeah, you know, I did start off like in theater, but then I remembered like, no, it was, I, I wanted to be a scientist, but I never really shared that story, but I'm sharing it with you now. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. So, um, so I know you mentioned again, that you didn't really necessarily know you were interested in acting, but how, once you did the play, how did your parents facilitate your growth in the arts? Um, so when I did the one act play, I remember, and I think anyone that's ever done theater, who is an actor who loves theater, 
remembers their first time on stage. Like it, you just can't forget it. And I remember vividly stepping out on stage and the feeling that you get and feeling the audience's energy and that it was just incredible. And, and I actually don't remember telling my parents about this. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, I don't know. Um, but my parents were really supportive. I think they didn't really understand it, to be honest, though. They're like, okay, because especially as um, a daughter of immigrants, oh. our parents tend to kind of focus a lot on jobs that are a little more secure, like being a lawyer or a doctor or something like that. And so when your kid is like, oh, I really like acting, they're like, okay, well, I don't really know what to do with that information, which I think actually resonates with a lot of parents when you talk to a lot of um child actor parents and they're like i don't know how to do this you know <laughs> um but my mom was always supportive in pretty much anything i did she was also i found out later she loved acting as a kid and she loved drawing and i didn't really know that until later on in life when she was like you know i did always want to be an actor when i was young and i was like what <laughs> now you it's blood in my blood <laughs> So I think maybe she saw something of that in me at that age and just was like, okay, well, we'll let her do this. But, you know, the protective mom is like, are you sure you don't want to be a lawyer? And I'm like, no, I, I don't want to do that. You don't want to be a doctor? No, I don't, I don't like blood. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, I mean, your story sounds familiar because the last person, well, not the last but the last person that I posted about their interview, she talked about her parents being immigrants from Guyana. And she was kind of saying the same thing. You know, they wanted her to have something more secure. Mm -hmm. um, they, You know, she's an animator, so they weren't really oh. sure. But they would, of course, buy her the art tools. And then I interviewed someone. Well, actually, they were like a filmmaker and an actor from the film Ludi from the Atlanta Film Festival and both um, the director and the actor were Haitian and the actress, which was a female, was saying the same exact thing that they wanted her to have something that they know would help bring it in the money. So it's very, it's a very similar story, you know. Yeah. A lot of people, especially the older generation, doesn't mm -hmm. really realize how, you know, the you know how the arts works and even like the career they have a lot of concerns like will you be able to get a job you know will right you get money so which are valid concerns honestly like right. our industry is very inconsistent so oh, yes and then if you don't understand it and you don't know how it it works it and how to survive in it you know i think it is a very common concern for anybody even the ones of us who are doing it you know it is still a concern um but my parents I think I've always been a little bit stubborn, if I'm being honest, and I'm like, well, I want to do this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, just keep, education was very important to them. So as long as I kept my education and I made sure to con continually educate myself, you know, make sure that I know what I'm getting myself into, then they were supportive in that way. And they came to all my shows. Oh, so they definitely yeah they oh yeah they they anything that i would they were like okay we'll go see you in this and unless i was like i don't know if you'll like this one don't come to this one <laughs> oh, you might be embarrassed so um, what was the what was the high school production that you were in i can't remember the name of it it was a one act play it, we did a series of one act plays and it was just one of those 15 minute plays i wish i could remember the name um I just I, I can't remember. No, no, it's it's okay because there's like one. I, my high school was very small. We had six hundred and fifty students. Oh wow! Yeah, you had to apply to get in. So I'm well again. I'm from Ohio, and the the term alternative schools is different from what it is here. It's like um, we have like a lot of art schools. So my my high school was college prep and performing arts. So. Oh, cool. um, on Wednesdays, sophomores, juniors, and seniors didn't come to school. We went out into the community and we did internships. So oh, one of my wow. internships was with my school's theater department. And um, I can't 
for the life of me remember the production. I remember what I played. I played a platypus. <laughs> I think it was a platypus. A duck or a, I think it was a duck. Something with a bill. Ducks, yes. You know what? I remember the name of the play. It was called a platypus story. That's the name of it. And we traveled to different schools throughout the city and put on the play, different elementary schools. So I take that back. I do remember the name of it. But um, yeah, so that that was a fun experience. You know, can you talk about your the experience that you had when you did your first production? I, re I can talk about when I walked on stage because I remember being so nervous the way I had to enter stage from a set of stairs I remember it was about two sisters who were arguing and I was like the sort of punk sister who was angsty and very moody and didn't understand why she couldn't get her way or something like that and my ex my other sister was more of an introvert and she was musical and played guitar and and I remember that one of us, I believe it was the the girl playing my sister, um, comes out in the play as a lesbian. And and it was about the two of them bonding and, and comforting her in that time, especially, you know, it was a big deal. And so I remember the beginning of the play when I come down the stairs yelling back at my parents, like, well, if you don't want him, I don't know, I like slammed the door or something like that. But I remember standing backstage like, cause I was so nervous. I was so nervous. Those butterflies just like kicking in your stomach. And as soon as I walked out down the stairs and hit the stage and the lights hit, I just remember the lights, it just all went away. And it's like, it was just a flow, like in this flow state of it just, it just worked. It all worked together. It was super wow. comfortable. And it was like, it was just supposed to be that way, you know? And it was so cool. Cause you know, as an actor, you have, you have what we call the actor hovering, which is, you know, your, your acting technical brain telling you like, now you have to go hit that mark. Now you have to go do this. And, and then the, all, at the same time, you're also very in engrossed in the story and in your character and paying attention to your other person. And those two brains have to work at the same time. And I remember my my actor brain just being like, whoa, what is this? This is so fun. <laughs> this is so cool. And and it's like it happens every time. Even still, it, it still happens. Wow. So which one is your favorite? Do you like acting on stage or do you like acting for film and TV? I honestly... I don't know. I don't know. The, it's so hard because it's so different. Mm -hmm. uh, there is nothing like acting on stage and having the audience react in real time and the rush of having to do an entire story from beginning to end with no breaks in between. Right. Yeah. It feels so cool because it's like, it's literally a world happening in front of everybody it's like a tiny little bubble of a world happening that you can't stop you know except for intermission you know. but you know <laughs> but it's so fun because you're in it and and the audience reacting in real time fuels it as well like it's sort of the symbiotic thing and it's different every night right yeah um, but on the other side i love film and tv so much because you can do things in film and TV that you can't do right. on stage and that movie magic and, and the, the togetherness of it all. Like the, the thing that they both have in common that I love is that everyone's working together for this end goal, but it's so fun in film to kind of know the secrets behind how this thing got done and how like the movie magic of it all. So that when you watch it, you see what it actually ended up looking like right. and kind of being in on it is really fun. Yeah. So when I, 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 of course, started in theater, and I really didn't, I did, my first background gig was 2006. I, was I think mine was too. <laughs> I was in <laughs> Stop the Yard, and oh. my first role wasn't until 2014, and so I went in my first role with really no formal film and TV, um, like, training. I had the experience with 
doing background work here and there. Mm-hmm. But um, I, it was kind of like learn as you go, not the first time. Um, but the person that I was working with, he was like, you don't have to act this big for film and TV as you do on um, stage. And I kind of knew that. So it was, a, it was a little bit easier for me. I do like acting. I do like theater, but I do like act. I like. I guess I like them both. But it's so hard to choose, right? I think what I love about, oh my gosh, it really like I. I almost don't want to answer it because it's so hard, yeah. and and it it's just different. It's different. That's like asking like, do you like pizza or do you like ice cream? And you're like, well, they're both delicious. Oh right. <laughs> but which one do I want right now? I don't know. <laughs> So um, you're one of the leaders in the Latinas in media. Can you mm-hmm. share with us about that? And if someone is Latina and in the film and TV industry, can they join? Yeah. So Latinas in media is a group of Latina talent in Atlanta who are advocating for representation in this industry. And the way that we've done that in the past so far has been through actually a series of one act plays that we've produced and uh along with meetups and um, other like Zoom events, especially during COVID. Uh, And so it really is trying to join everyone together while also being like, hey, we're here, you guys pay attention and representation matters. So here we are. And um, yeah, anyone who who identifies as Latina and actually anyone I would think can can join. You just kind of have to like the Facebook page and follow us on Instagram because that's mainly how we keep in touch with everyone and where we post our meetups and things like that. And when we have auditions or when we produce anything, uh, that's our main communication platform is through there. That's so, that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, yeah, I would, lo- I would like to maybe share it with some people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's for, we're hoping to, you know, not just stay within Atlanta, but the Southeast because, you know, unity amongst all of us is just going to help everybody. It goes back to kind of what I was saying before. Like, I really believe in in everyone kind of working together and helping each other out and giving all you can so that everyone kind of builds and grows together because it's just going to make all of us stronger, you know? That's, that's so true. So you've worked on a few big projects, such as Baby Driver and WandaVision, just to name a few. Can you talk to us about that and what those experiences were like? Oh, my goodness. I, this is when I go back to, oh, I love working on film and TV (laughs) because it's so fun. Um, Baby Driver was a blast. That was one of my favorite projects to work on because not only did I never think I would work with Edgar Wright, who was one of my favorite directors, um, but we got to do things that I hadn't got to do until that point in my career, you know, like Walking Dead was great. And I actually loved working on Walking Dead a lot because we also, I, not only was it the first big thing that I did, but it was also um, really exciting to live in this post-apocalyptic world. And I love horror movies and like things like that. (laughs) So that was a lot of fun to watch. Like I said, like the movie magic of how it gets done and, you know, the, 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 um, I'm remembering when uh, one of the characters gets her arm like bitten off and you watch them put the prosthetics on, you watch them pour all the blood, you watch how it all happens. And, and that was just so interesting. And so things like that, I really enjoy. So Baby Driver was also interesting in that way because I'd never seen anyone do like big rig setups yet. And for this, one of the scenes that I'm in, spoiler alert if no one's seen it, but kind of, John Hamm gets shot in one of the scenes and the way that he gets shot like t- pulls him back and he falls on the ground and they did stunt like bigger stunts in this film that I hadn't seen before. And so they did like a whole rigging setup that gets him pulled back and I had to run and go out to these cop cars that slid into frame and it was all it was just very exciting. It was a very exciting film and so it was really easy to be in that world and feel that adrenaline truthfully as the character but also as myself um so being like trying to be afraid but also trying not to be like this is so cool (laughs) right trying to be a fan oh yeah and wandavision was similar where it again the movie magic aspect of it where 
we're behind the scenes in you know on the day of and you see this world coming to life but you don't get to see the full product until it comes out with all the cgi and the effects and and how that is so important to the story and i really don't want to ruin that one in case anyone hasn't watched wandavision because please go watch wandavision but uh i didn't realize what a pivotal scene i was in until i watched the show and was like oh <laughs> that's great yeah, I'm one of those people i have not baby driver i have not seen wandavision like my two of my kids have but uh, i have like i don't know i'm like i work in film and tv i'm a writer i don't watch i rarely watch tv or movies unless i have them in it you should watch wandavision is such good storytelling it really is they did if you've ever seen any of the marvel movies they did it so differently but still within that world that and it just worked so well it was so well done and if you like any genre of film they literally cover film and tv over decades and it's it's super cool that's amazing so you you keep talking about like the magic that kind of reminds me of I used to work for Disney. Um, I worked at Disney, uh, Disney Park. I worked at the Magic Kingdom. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you've ever been to Disney or the Magic Kingdom, but they have the underground tunnels. Oh. And you like, they try, and I'm assuming, I don't remember as a kid when before I started working, I don't remember it looking like magic, but I'm assuming it does. Because you ha you can like go behind like I don't know go behind like a door and then you're in the, the the tunnels at Disney World so they make everything look like magic but if you go into the tunnels you're gonna see Cinderella I, I I hate to say this for anyone who's watching that has never been to Disney you're gonna probably see Cinderella smoking a cigarette or one of the face characters without their their head on but it's all magic but like you can work i worked in what was that fantasy land so you could only enter into your land with the costume that you have on but if you work mm -hmm. in frontier land you could not come in come up into fantasy land because of your specific costume so they made it all magic everything was magic and it was to the point where it wouldn't be the kids losing their minds it would be the parents who was oh. losing their minds because it just be <laughs> magic so it would just be real you know really interesting so it's so similar to of course disney has the films and animation but right. they make it real like real life magic and it's to the point where if you're walking through I can't remember the first land you walked through. I don't something know. The United States. It's something to do with the United States. You can, they have the smell coming from the underground. The I've smell, heard about this. The smell of chocolate chip cookies. And it's to uh -huh. entice people to come into the shop to buy the their cookies. So yeah. it's stuff like that. Yeah, but it's so effective, right? Like that sort of thing for the audience if you will is just so wonderful because you are immersed in in this experience and i feel like movies were meant to be that way right we go to them that's why you sit in a dark movie theater and you try to immerse yourself in this giant screen it's like i'm being put into this world as best i can so that i can feel like i'm here and and it's yeah, it is like magic when it when it all works together. <laughs> if it works together, it's great. If it doesn't work, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, it no, it does. And I think sometimes people will pay money to go into the tunnels, and I'm like, oh really? I'm like, had I, I mean, had I never worked at Disney, I don't think. I, if I would have known about the tunnels, I don't think. I didn't know about this. I mean, I imagine there's a place where they all relax, right? Like they have yeah, to. It's, it's it's like the mat is really the Magic Kingdom that has because it's the biggest park. So it covers like I want to say the whole length of the Magic Kingdom, and you you can walk down there. Of course, there's places for cast members to eat. Um, there's a locker room down there. You. Can, 
I'm just sharing all the secrets. No, yeah, I was gonna say this is so. I mean, I'm sure I'm not surprised Disney is so well thought out, but yeah. like planning that has to go into that is is insane. Yes. So I mean, of course, you know, I, when I worked there, I worked there for two summers. I was a college student, so I had to learn everything. But I don't think if I would have never worked there, I would not want to go down there because I think it would ruin the magic for me. Well, I was just going to say it probably would ruin the magic for you, right? Because like bringing it back to film for a second, knowing so much about production, sometimes you watch a movie and you can't, you almost can't immerse yourself in it the same way. Right. Once, once you've edited some, become an editor to some degree, or once you, you know, are a lighting tech or something like that, you pay attention to those things with like a business mind instead of the consumer's mind, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that happens all the time. 